Lord God the Father, has asked you to come and be with us this time, Lord God. May we step out of the world and come to the peace of the word, Lord God. And come into the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and the joy set forth, Lord God. That it's a little resting place, Lord, covered from the storm. Lord God, may the Holy Spirit speak through me. May I be filled with the Holy Spirit now, Lord God, as we open your word, Lord. Let me not be in error. Let me not be in sin. But Lord, rightly dividing the word of truth, Lord God, that I won't be ashamed, that we won't be ashamed. For Jesus' sake, Lord God, and I pray that the VA will stop Amen. having appointments on Wednesdays, Lord. That's Lord, whether jobs or anything, Lord God, I pray for these ministries that you allow me to continue them, Lord. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so John, chapter 1. Woohoo! Moving right along. Yep. And let's see, I don't have the verse mentioned here. John 1, what? John 1, verse 13. Mm-hmm. Moving right along. And we'll start in verse 12 for the context. But as many as received him, I have, to them, mm-hmm. notice the plural, so it's not just saying me, all of us here at this table, to us, gave he power to become the sons of God, which he talked about. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, talked about that, not the will of flesh, nor the will of man, and there we are today, but of God. So the will of man. No one human has ever wanted the Messiah to come. You say, well, the Israelites, what did they do to Jesus? They gave him a cross. They... At his final moments, they cried out, crucify him, crucify him. He said they wanted a Messiah. They wanted a Messiah that would give them bread, give them food, give them fish, give them soup kitchen. They wanted a Messiah that, hey, conquer Rome. Get Rome out of here. Give us our, our area so we can sin to the fullest. Man in his sin. You go and you tell people of Jesus Christ, they don't want it. They don't want him. They waited, they spoke, but the will of man, the Old Testament spoke about the coming Messiah. Even Mary, she doubted. What do you mean I'm going to have a baby without having any relations with a man? Wouldn't that have popped into her head somewhere in the scriptures? This sounds familiar. Now remember, Gabriel had no wings, so she doesn't know, you know, it's an angel, it's a man to her. But isn't the fact is that here is a woman who's never had a relation, is going to have a child. Wouldn't that not have popped into a Jewish girl's head? Like, it's me. It's finally come. But he had to explain to her about how the Holy Spirit would come and, and come upon her and the power of God. Man wants a God that will please him. God, there are men out there, they want a beer God. Well, this is bad, but beer is good. Scientists are always saying, well, wine's bad, wine is good for you. Drinking moderately is good for you. Drinking, blah, blah. They want a God like that. They want a sex God. That sex God is coming up on Estar Day. Where you get the chocolates, where it's supposed to make you more active, and you got the eggs, and you got the little sperm children running around trying to chase the egg, and you got the, the statues, got all the boobies and stuff like that. That's all sex worship. And it's in the Christian church. No, I'll take that back. Because some people say they're Christian, right? It's in the Baptist church. All Easter is is a Roman pagan holiday of orgies that the Romans are known for. And here's a day of Esther with her boobies. So, they don't want a God that will forgive and forget sin. They want a God that will honor their sin. Sodomites, the Bible says, Paul writes, there's another Jesus. Sodomites have a Jesus of the rainbow cloud, and he just loves men that love men, and women that sleep with women. Don't you dare come to us. I've got video of people do go to these things, and they preach the gospel, and I've got the torture and the, and the treatment they get to the preachers. Don't you bring God into it. Man goes into a store, and he shops for God. 
And he picks his own God out that he likes that that God will and be pleased with him. It's not the will of man that Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, sinless perfection. What could have Jesus done so wrong that they said crucify him? Think about it. Yeah, one week there saying... Give us food, give us food, no, heal the, me, the, heal the, me. The throwing the palms down and saying he's going to be their king, and the, the week after they're called oh, crucifying him. Right. So there is no true repentance, and even churches today are running away from repentance. They're run, they've already run away from sin. Now they're running away from... You, you can say this prayer and not be sorry, and your name is... You're going to be going to glory. No, that's not true. Prayer, you have to mean it. Man has made his own gods, and God said in Exodus 20, Thou shalt have no other god before me. God has written the Scriptures, I am a jealous God. When you have other gods, and then they'll turn around and say, well, it's not a god, it's an aid to worship. And the Catholic Church has gone so far as taking the second commandment out and broken ten into two. I've been in the religion, I know. When you walk into the Catholic Church, they've got all kinds of statues. Well, shout out, instead of saying B23, say, hey, imagery, idolatry, God says thou shalt not have. The so man shops for his own god. So we have, look at that, will of man. We're done on the will of man, that's it. That's all i got to say about it. He does not want the holy, righteous God. I stand amazed when I preach the gospel. I preach about hell and I preach about heaven. I preach about the torments and the, and the condemnation in hell. And I preach to people, I look at them and I say, listen, you're going to get a glorified body. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more departing. All your health care, and I tell them God's got the greatest health care ever. He'll take away all diseases and all curses, and they walk on by. And yet, if somebody on the side of the street somewhere is selling heroin or selling this other junk, or, hey, I have a prescription for my pain medicine that's only going to last for eight hours or four hours, give it to me, give it to me. How crazy are you? I'll tell you, when I got saved, and I'll say it over and over, the main reason I got saved was because I did not want to go to hell. That's it. That's right. My motive for, for being saved was, God, you're going to save me? You're going to bring me out of hell? I put my sins under you? Okay, let's go. It's not the God. You're getting worse and worse and worse as far as away from holiness. Don't ever tell me three things. Don't ever tell me every man loves Jesus. I'll tell you, you don't witness. Don't tell me the freedom of America because I will give you a police officer's name that told me to stop doing it. I know. And don't ever tell me America is a Christian nation because I will tell you the, the Christian nation has told the preachers to shut up. And preachers have given in to it. So the next thing we got, but of God. So what is the difference between religion and true Christianity? Religion is the will of man. Look what I can do. And whatever it is. Money, charity, jumping through hoop, make yourself bloody, trying to please God. Whatever it is, that's religion. That's man. Religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved and the will of God. It's God-ordained. The birth, the life, the ministry, the suffering, and the death, and the burial in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again according to the scriptures. Salvation by Jesus Christ, John chapter 1 that we've read so far in 13 verses, is God ordained. There's no... And the thing is, another thing I'll preach about, God never asked your opinion. Well, I think, no, God don't care what you think. Because God said in Genesis, to, He said to Noah, He said the thoughts and imaginations are wicked and violence. And after Noah got off that ark, He says your thoughts and your wickedness and your thoughts are still a violence. God don't care what you think. God doesn't care. Your opinions are like armpits. They smell. And you've got a peril. That's what God says. John 3.16 Man does not want what God says. I mean, 
I'm going to safely say, and, and I could be wrong about this, but when I was presented with the gospel for the very first time, I got saved. Now, I had a grandma say, come to church, 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 come to church. That didn't save me. That didn't tell me nothing. So this thing, come to church, come to church, come, it's going to get saved. I went to church, I believe that that Sunday morning was the first time I ever heard about Jesus Christ as far as true biblical salvation. I received it. But not many people do that. A lot of people hear the gospel, hear the gospel, hear the gospel. He never understood why Jesus was still on the cross. Yeah. He got up if he was yeah, we had we would have Easter saying Jesus rose from the grave, but next Sunday he's still on that cross. How can you have a resurrection? I was confused. The thing is, we've been preaching now four or five years at Daytona and Farmers Market. We see some of the same people that have been there for five years. And I preach the same Jesus. I don't change it. I don't give you chocolate sauce this week. I don't give you caramel sauce this week. I don't give you cool whip. I don't give you a sherry. I give you. I give you Jesus Christ, and they sit there like dumb animals. You got an old woman that does that. Very old woman. Old, older woman. Like 65, 75. She walks by and she's like. So John 3.16 like says, For God, there we go. Like For God so loved the world. That's past tense, by the way. He gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved man. God loves his creation. Man was created by God. You know what other gods, the, the will of man does? You know what those gods do? Man creates that God. Man has created a monkey. And from Mr. Monkey, my, un my monkey's uncle, is this monkey has produced us from apes. One day we're walking around with full of hair, then next thing you know, somehow the hair just falls off. No razors. The evolution of man. You women should get upset. What happened to the evolution of woman? You know, evolution, there's no sex. I don't want a relationship like that. God says sex. So the, listen, the first thing that God told man and the man and the woman, get married and boom, there you go. To help me was to make more children. That love is past sense. That love is at Calvary. But God loved man, his creation. God is not willing that any should perish. He wants all to be saved, but he can't in his holiness. He says, be holy for I am holy. We're not holy. All is sin. All is unrighteous. We can't do it. So God had to step in and look down and say, you know, all those men are going to go to hell if I don't do something. Because I am the only one that can do it. 2 Peter 3.9 You say, well, how is that different from religion? God is not willing that any should perish. God wants all, and if it's possible, if God could, He would save everybody. Alright? The Catholic Church will say, in the general resurrection, all people are going to heaven. Really? How can you say that if you don't belong to the church, you don't take the sacrament, you don't have the priest there when you die, and you're not buried in their cemetery, you go off to hell. The Mormons, you know, if you don't believe the Mormonism, you can't have, make babies in outer space. Jehovah Witnesses, if you don't teach what we, you're not going to survive the tribulation period. Wait a minute. If these religions say all people are going to heaven, why do they put restrictions on going to heaven by only by their means? When God said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But Lord, I'm colored. I don't care. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. Lord, I'm a little child. I don't care. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, Lord, I'm a Catholic. Come out of that. And be saved. Amen. I'm a Presbyterian. Well, come out of that. Be saved. 2 Peter 3 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. There was that single promise. As some men count slackness. Well, you can. You may get purgatory. We don't get purgatory. Last time I heard purgatory was closed, but I think it's open again. One pope closes, the other pope opens. I, I, how, do you, how do you get involved in religion where they don't even know where you're going to go, and you can't trust their leaders with your children? And I just read Tracy the other day. Now the nuns are having sexual relations with the children. How on earth are you so boogie-headed, so stupid, do you continue to be involved in that mess? 
The slap is for men. Well, you may go to heaven, but you may not go to heaven. But you be us, you, and you can go to heaven. But if you're not us, you don't go to heaven. But we do have a, 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 a loophole. That's man's slackness. No religion can give you the satisfaction as the Word of God says, these things have I written unto you, that you may know you have eternal life. But is long-suffering to us word. Why has not the rapture happened? Because there's someone out there the Lord knows who's going to get saved. That's not predestination, that's the foreknowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Do you realize if, if every man would do the will of God, he'd be called into heaven by now? How many things in our life that God wanted to bless us, but it relied on another man, and they would not do what God has told them to do? I had probably been a disappointment to someone somewhere by God telling me to do something and I didn't do it. And then I cry to God to do something for me and that person is not involved. When we tell God no, we are hindering somebody else. When you don't witness to that person, what if that's the last person to get saved and that moment he goes, the rapture's called. Well, could have had the rapture 10 years ago, but... You didn't witness like you're supposed to. Uh, and let's just go a rare, I mean, it wouldn't happen, but let's go over it. Let, let's say, what if Mary had an abortion? Well, you had to save her, but you had to kill him. All these babies being born. What if one of them babies, I don't know. Churches want a great revival. Well, what if that woman, and if we go on the streets, we hold signs, you know, of babies in the womb and stuff like that. No, tell them about this. Maybe that mother repent, get right with God, and properly have a child, and properly have that child grow up to be a minister. I don't know. I don't know. But well, we're not done. Long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish. Here I go, that's what I've been quoting. But that all should come to repentance. That's kind of interesting. Do you think a Catholic really wants to see me in heaven? What I do on the streets? You think they want to go to my heaven? I'll tell you. Uh, what, about, what about Southern, I don't mean Southern Baptists, but Baptists in the South. They think they're going to go to a heaven where there's coon dogs and there's a shed and there's a fishing boat and an electric outboard motor and they go fishing in the bayou all day long. They're not going to want my heaven. My heaven is where you worship the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever, and no passes, no one else. You know, if everybody did go to heaven, which sounds great, sounds nice, you know how long it would be before we had heaven, World War I? Heaven, War, I can't say World, but heaven, War Two, heaven, War Three. and can you imagine if you're going to a place where Stalin, Hitler, and all of them are in one place? The Jews would be petrified. You think we'd be going to a place where the Catholics are going with the, the Bible believers? There would be petrification of killing and maiming and torturing Christians all over again. I'm glad not everybody's going to heaven. Not a right place. But God's not willing that any should perish. God wants them all, for God so loved the world. That is the will of God, all men to be saved. But you can't. All have sinned. All come short of glory. There is no sin in heaven, so you can't bring us in. Revelation said, if those would be pure, be pure too. Those are vile, be vile. I'm not quoting that verse. You want to be a sinner? You don't. Go into hell and do it. There are no more liars in heaven. There's liars in hell. 1 Timothy 2.4. 1 Timothy 2.4. Can you imagine what a man's heaven would be like? I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about no God. Don't think about God. Think about what a man would have for heaven. I'll give you an idea. For any women and women sitting here at this table, three women to one man, and whoever this video gets out. How about this? How would you like to go to a man's heaven where you will be given amongst... I forget how many is now. But as a virgin, you'll be given to one man for his sexual desires for all eternity as the Muslims teach. Doesn't, if, a, if, if he's a good Muslim, doesn't he get virgins in heaven? How would you like to be one of those women? 
How would you like to be a Mormon woman in, in wherever they're having it, and all you're going to do is make babies for outer space? Are you going to make those babies in pain or without pain? Big difference. That's why Mormons marry multiple wives for sexual gratitude and to make all these babies for the population in the outer space. Listen, if that's on earth, women give birth in pain and agony. Great God you got. So what are men's heads? It's an unholy place. It's a place of no virtue, no glory, no honor. 1 Timothy 2.4 Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? I'm dealing with, with a guy right now who's dealing with a man and this guy just pleased. He's just so wicked. God would not ever forgive him. Where one time we're dealing with a little old lady, I'm going to say 70, 80 years old, hunchback, just this frail woman. Gray hair, kind of bluish, someone's great grandmother. And that woman looked at us when we were witnessing the gospel and, and shaking her finger and said, God could never, never forgive me for what I've done. And you look at that woman like, what on earth could you have done? And yet they despise the gospel. That's the other side. You know, men think, oh, I'm just too great and all that. And then here's the woman, I'm just too wicked. God says, the will of God is I would have all to come. The will of man, that's not my God. That's not what I want. You know, we can't drink beer in heaven. We're going to drink it in hell. No, you won't. Uh -uh. No, you won't. That's what man wants. He wants eating, drinking, sex. And think of himself. If, if we had a man's will, man's heaven, we'd go to a place with statues and, and, and pictures. If not, go to a museum. Go, go to any park. There's faces and there's... You would see grossness of nudity all around a man's heaven. Not God. God said he was going to close us with, a, with righteousness. Fine linen is, is, is something of the righteousness of the saints. We're going to have fine linen one day. We're going to be all dressed in pure white. You're all going to want to take a picture of me in pure white. I don't go good with white. I put white on and all the dirt comes up. I'll be going to be in pure white one day, brightest and purest white ever to be. There'll be no marriages in heaven. He says, be as the angel. You never need to give into marriage. Well, that would take a lot of men out. I take a, a, a girl growing up, you know, her vision of marrying her Prince Charming. Not in glory. And God says, come. I will have all men to be saved. You just got to come. They don't. They run. How many times have we, as, as an individual, gone to witness to somebody, and they said no to the gospel, and they go run to whatever they believe, even if it's atheism? Like I said, we're coming upon Esther. That's a complete sexual. Like Valentine's Day. Complete sexual. That man is typically, typically is not going to give a box of chocolate just because he loves his spouse. He wants something. That's lust. That's lust. But for God so loved the world that he gave. What could God lust from us? What could God gain from us? Look at all the gifts. That for Valentine's Day, not just the chocolates, boxer shorts, lingerie, you know, it's all. Wow. What could we give God to honor if he saved our soul? Nothing. I go out and witness. The, Jesus said that is our servitude. We, that is, we've done the least we could be doing. Right. And then on top of it, he will reward us, but we're supposed to says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. That's a command. Some people think if they do it, oh, you know, God, no, that's what you're supposed to do. Go out in the world. Why? Because God says, I want all men to be saved, but they're not all going to be saved. Mm. Ezekiel 18.32. Man will put limits on salvation for other men. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you really think would you really think, if a man's religion world, would you think the next, uh, Ezekiel 18.32, 
Would you think the NACP would allow the KKK into their heaven? <laughs> and I'm not for either. I'm just saying. Could you see the national advancement of colored people biting the KKK into their heaven? Well, why is there a national advancement of colored people? What about Jewish people? What about white people? What about Native American people? What about female people? What about male people? And if we had a man's heaven, what about you poor women? What would you think the men would have you to wear? <laughs> Man in sinful flesh. In Ezekiel 18.32, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, churn yourselves and live ye. There's another place in the psalm that says that the death of a saint brings pressure to God. When a saint dies, God says, Welcome home. I'm glad you're here. I had to leave you down there because you had work to do for me. And I, but now that you're here, I enjoy it. God says, I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy going to the death. I don't enjoy the cemeteries. Because my jury, the people in the cemeteries are in hell and agony and burning and rejected God today. Yet, cemeteries are never full. I have never seen a cemetery say no vacancy. And yet, a cemetery has two paths. There are ones that walk the broad way that went into destruction. They're in hell. There are ones that walk the narrow gate and they're in glory. Both saved and lost, God says, I have no pleasure in the death. God did not enjoy Adam dying. God never intended Adam to die. He never intended Eve to die. But they disobeyed the command. They ate the fruit that they weren't supposed to eat. The Bible says that when Jesus approached death, they didn't stay dead. They're walking down the street going to name, and here's a, a boy in a coffin in a beer. It's funny, the Bible says beer is a coffin. And he stopped him. And that boy rose, resurrected for his mother. Jesus went to a funeral of his best friend, and he's already been buried four days, and the Bible records the shortest verse that children learn. Jesus wept at the death. And Jesus wept when he knew he was going to raise Lazarus again. How's that? Jesus knew full well that Lazarus was going to come out before nightfall. But yet he wept. He watched human beings cry at the death, at the misery. And God looks down and says, I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy that. Man saying, the angels in heaven don't want me. That's a lie. Ezekiel 33, 11. Now, this is the will of God. The will of God is, I don't want you to die. I don't want you to go to hell. For I so love the world that I gave my son. Ezekiel 33, 11. Say unto them, as I live. That's an oath. That's God standing in the courtroom putting his hand on his word and say, do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth? So help me. <laughs> no, no, not so help me God, so help me, God speaking, I do. And when God makes an oath, he says, the Bible says he cannot, will not, is unable to tell a lie. How's that? As I live, does God ever die? No, he never dies. So this is the eternal oath. As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But that the wicked turn from his way. That's repentance. That is not in the churches today. That is not in most of your people going out witnessing. Just say this prayer. No repentance. God says repent. I'm a sodomite. I'm saved and God loves me. Are you going to stop being a sodomite? Are you going to try to stop being a sodomite? No. Then you're not saved. Now you may sin. You may do that sin. Are you sorry for that sin most of the time? Sometimes, you know, you might hey, enjoy it. But then there are times you're just heartbroken. That's a sign of repentance. And then there are sins in your life that God said, okay, say goodbye to. I don't remember when it left. <laughs> wow. I didn't know that was gone. 
Repentance is not only being sorry, it's doing a U-turn and running away. Problem is, sometimes it chases you. And sometimes it catches you. And there are times, okay, like I said, you may not be sorry, but there'll be times you are sorry, you are upset. That's repentance. So look what he says. The wicked turn from his way and live. John the Baptist says, He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. You better believe salvation is repentance, and there is somebody talking to you, you're witnessing to. Oh, I'm saying, did you repent? Well, oh, I there's no salvation, I'm sorry. There's no sorry. I don't care if you're a worldly Christian. You've got to have that repentance of your sin you're doing. Or there's no salvation. Look what it says. Turn ye, turn ye. You got the point? Turn ye, turn ye. From your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? That's speaking to Israel. But that's also for a lost man. Turn. You know what the old saying used to be in the olden days? Turn or burn. I had a preacher tell me that's so harsh. Wow. I had a, I had a Christian woman yesterday and she was there. Now you just preach so much hell. What else am I going to preach? You're not going to get a Tootsie Roll in heaven? <laughs> the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? If there's no hell. If there's no hell and you, re and you didn't repent and you said a prayer, there is no salvation. Well, what if, I, what if I'm wicked, I'm saved, and I, and I don't like my sin, and I'm battling my sin? Then listen, you, you got the good fight. You're going to fight more with your flesh than you're going to fight with, with, the, with the other religions. Because you've got to live with yourself. I'm battling the Lord right now with, with the scripture and I don't know where I am in my life and the scripture says this and I'm doing this and then Lord, I don't want to read that. But Lord, you're in charge. I want to do right. The will of God is get right, stop doing it, fight it, come to me, lay it upon me. If you can confess your sins, I am just to forgive, to forgive your sins and to cleanse you. 1 John 1.9 the man says, well, God loves everybody. He's just so happy. Go ahead. Go for the gusto. Just do it. And then when you die in your deathbed, have a priest come and absolve you of all your sins. That's what the religion I came out of. You know? I came out of religion. You can go to Mass on Saturday so you can go party afterwards and you don't have to get up so early on Sunday morning. What makes sin convenient for you? Just, that's man. That's the will of man. The will of God, the Holy God is get right, do right, and battle. The religion of man, I'll have another beer, please. I'll have another. We sat at a wedding of two Christians. And, well, what would you like to drink? I like to have a root beer. My daughter, I like to have a root beer. My wife goes iced tea. Hey, I have a Bud Light. You got any draft? What kind of wine? You can't give up that junk for a Christian wedding. You are more honorable to that alcohol beverage than a true Christian is to witnessing and doing what the Bible tells. Shame. It was the guests, not the. Yeah. yeah. Matthew 25, 41. Matthew 25, 41. So the will today, the will of man and the will of God. The will of man, let's, let's go for it. Daytona is a great place for the will of man. Let's get on our holly, let's get drunk and see women half naked, if not fully naked, and party with all kinds of music. And don't you dare bring that Christ here. And let's act like a teenager coming, or however age they're coming out of college, is completely goofy and mess up our entire life by doing drugs. That's the will of man. The will of God is you go to those places and you bring the gospel, except for the teen week, we don't do that, spring break. You bring the gospel to them and you be an offshoot, you be against them, but you be for me. And you live right. 
And when you see that, just turn the other way. And that happened many times during bike with me. Turn the other way. God said, don't look. Now, again, sometimes the flesh gets in there. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, Lord, didn't mean to do that. And sometimes, oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, sorry. Not sorry, but I'm sorry. You're battling. The world has programs. Programs say, if you join our program for this substance abuse, you may not succeed. You may fall off the wagon. Really? Is that a holy, righteous God? <laughs> Come on. Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say unto them that on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. But because man sinned against God and man is a sinner, if you do not do what God's told you to do, you go there. If you rebelled against God like Satan rebelled against God, that's your place. Look what else he says. Verse 46, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Now what have we been reading? 2 Peter, 1 Timothy, Ezekiel. God is not willing. God does not want. God will not have you to go to hell. And we come to Matthew 25, and what happens? Man goes to hell against God. Matthew said, it says, Depart from me, work with iniquity. I never knew you. I think it's seven. It's in there, said the preacher. Uh, all right, Matthew 7, 23. Do you realize? In hell today, right now today, there are people in hell right now, souls. Mm -hmm. There are, if the Lord, when the Lord tarries, he's going to tarry because he has not come yet. So he's going to tarry. Hopefully he comes before the end of this message. It would be great. Mm -hmm. But there are people going into hell. There are people in hell. Okay, believe that? Many Baptists don't. You realize any man that goes into hell, both past, present, and future, Maybe somebody just went off to hell right now. I don't know. Probably. Do you realize they went into hell against the will of God? What we just read? You know, people will ask you sometimes to get ready for this question. It's, well, what's the will of God in my life? Well, we just read, first of all, don't go to hell. You, and they'll, they'll blame God for everything. God killed the baby. God caused the storm. God, you know, it was an act of God. God says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You went in by your own. Your will went against God's will. What's God's will? Be holy. What's the, man, what's the will of man? Be a sinner. The two differences of man's will and God's will is totally, as far as the scale from, one, from zero to ten, God being ten, man being zero. There's no in between. You don't get half to heaven by halfway to Jesus. Oh, they call that purgatory, but there is no purgatory, so you can't say there's a five. It's hell or it's heaven. It's heaven by Jesus Christ alone who said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes unto the Father but by me, or everything else is hell. You go in by the will of God, which is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, or you go with man, anything and everything. Anything and everything. Matthew 7. 23. And then will I confess unto them, I never knew you. That's definitely a lost man. Depart from me. Get away from me. God's never going to say that to a Christian. A saved Christian. 
Ready? Ye that work iniquity. Notice that, notice that statement when he just said, ye that work iniquity. Those who die without Christ are still in their sin. Your iniquity. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53 says he died for our iniquity. He suffered for our iniquity. He paid for our sin. The blood of Christ cleanses us. And what we went through, through 2 Peter, 1 John, and Ezekiel, God's not willing that any should perish. But there are people, Jesus Christ is going to stand at the great white throne judgment and say, get out of my face. You're full of iniquity. You did not do what Ezekiel told you to do. Turn, turn, turn. Repent. Get right. Leave that evil way. You didn't leave that evil way. You're still in your iniquity. When a man goes to hell, he goes by the will of man and opposes the will of God. It is not God that sends a man to hell. You say, yes, he does. No, he doesn't. You go on your own voluntary, I don't know what word, response or action. Because I believe God will send everybody somehow a witness, your conscience, whatever it is, And you have gone the way that's gone against God. God, what we read says, I'm not willing to any perish. I want all to be with me. I want all to do right. I have told you what to do. I have told you to repent. I have told you to, to flee sin. I've told you to put it on the blood of Jesus Christ. I told you, my son, the death, burial, resurrection. I have sent men out there to tell you. I put gospel tracts out there for you. I've given you a radio. I've given you some TV. I've given you churches and some billboard signs outside of church, which are all failing today. Imagine a church having a billboard where the entire the world that passes by that church and they say, Pastor Appreciation Week. Mm -hmm. Sunday we'll have an egg hunt. No glory to God. We glory in the law of the, of the Lord. Gospel benefit. Gospel benefit. And they don't say believe. Every sign should say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. Sinner. Add a word to the word of God if you want to. Boy, how the church is getting watered down. I told Tracy I, I, I want to build a church on Tomoka Farms Road and build it right across from the Jehovah Witness compound and put a big lighted sign that says, My Lord, my God. The city probably shut me down. Mm -hmm. Lord God, just thank you for the way of holiness. And Lord, I am far from it. I am a sinner by breaking all the commandments. Lord, I don't have a battlement upon my road. That classifies me as a sinner. I don't even own that. And Lord, times this flesh has risen up, has stood up has claimed the victory. But that's a battle. There's more war to come, but one day, Lord God, you'll get the victory over all. By the judgment seat of Christ. Wood, hay, and stubble burning up ashes. Gold, silver, precious stones of crowns and rewards. By a sinless body. Perfection, purification, holiness, and righteousness. One day. Lord God, I just pray for our families and our friends and people we come across and people who we will meet, Lord God, that they will leave the way of man and come unto the way of holiness, the straight gate, by the Lord Jesus Christ alone. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Amen.